Hi, welcome back to Story Time with Mrs. Prim. Today we're going to read a story that's a little bit longer than I normally read, but it's such a good story that I wanted to share it with you. And it's called The Red Bicycle, the extraordinary story of one ordinary bicycle. So this is based on a true story. So think about that as we're reading it together. The Red Bicycle. Leo wipes the sweat of his brow. It's a hot day and he's almost finished mowing the neighbor's lawn. Today he will meet his goal. He will have earned enough money to buy a new bicycle. For two years, Leo has watched his money grow. Each time a neighbor paid him for mowing a lawn, raking leaves, or shoveling snow, he would take his money to the bank. Then he would stop at the bike shop across the street to visit his bicycle. It had 18 gears and a suspension fork and is painted bright red. Leo finishes mowing and collects his pay, then runs to the bank. There, he withdraws the money for his bicycle. He hurries to the bike shop and watches while the owner counts out the money. Congratulations, Leo, she says. She knows how much he has wanted this bicycle. Leo names the bicycle Big Red. He rides Big Red to school. He rides it to the swimming pool. He rides it to soccer practice. Leo rides Big Red everywhere. Leo wants Big Red. Oh, you skipped a page here. Leo is getting older and is growing. He grows so tall one summer that his knees hit Big Red's handlebars. It is time for a new bicycle. But Leo loves Big Red. Even though the bicycle is a few years old, he has taken good care of it, and Big Red looks almost brand new. He wheels Big Red into the garage, feeling a little sad. He walks to school, thinking about what to do with the bike. Leo wants to give Big Red to someone who will love the bicycle as much as he does, but everyone he knows already owns a bike. After school, Leo walks to the bike shop. The owner asks where Big Red is, and Leo explains that he has outgrown the bicycle. He needs a bigger bike, he says, and a new home for Big Red. I have an idea for you, she says, pointing to this poster. An organization in town is collecting bicycles. They send the bikes to a faraway country, to people who can't afford a bicycle, but need one for transportation. Right there, Leo decides to donate Big Red. It will have a new home where it is really, really needed. Leo wants Big Red to look its best for its trip. He washes the frame until it gleams. He oils the chain. He puts on new hand grips. His father takes a photo of Leo working on Big Red. When he's finished, Leo hops on the too small bicycle and rides to the shipping container where Big Red will start its new journey. This is the pair's last ride together. The shipping container is surrounded by bikes and by people there to help out. One man demonstrates how to take apart a bicycle for packing. Leo gets right to work. He grabs a bike and unhooks the front brake. Then he removes the front tire and pedals. He loosens the handlebars and lowers the seat. When the, with the man's help, he ties the front wheel to the frame and the pedals under the seat. Leo works on so many bikes, he loses count. Finally, only one bicycle remains, Big Red. Leo takes apart his bicycle. He places it in the container. It is one of 462 bikes, spare parts, tools, knapsacks, and soccer balls on their way to Africa. Leo feels a lump in his throat as the door closes. And there's the shipping van. The driver hops into the cab and toots his horn and everyone claps and cheers. Leo waves as the truck pulls away. Goodbye, Big Red, have a great adventure. At the shipping port, a crane loads the container onto a big freighter. There it is. The red bicycle is squeezed against the container door. It is secure for now, but the ocean can be rough, especially if there are storms. The ship leaves the port and heads south. Containers shift as the wind whips up and the waves get higher. Near South America, the ship turns and heads across the Atlantic. 
straight across the Atlantic towards West Africa, hugging the coast until it reaches Ghana. After 29 days, the red bicycle reaches land. A crane picks up the container and loads it onto a truck. As the truck lumbers north, the container rocks back and forth on the rough road. Big red bangs against the door each time the truck dips into a pothole and back out again. Finally, the truck stops at the, at the city of Ku Du. Let me try that again. Finally, the truck stops at the city of Ku Du Gu in Burkina Faso, but Big Red's journey is not over. The bicycles are unloaded and reassembled. Their frames glint in the African sun. An organization that helps widows and orphans will distribute the bicycles to families who need them. Bicycles save time and effort. Children ride them to school and older folks use them to transport goods to market. Awa Sawadugu is a grandmother who is raising three of her grandchildren. She and her granddaughter, Alaseta, are waiting for a bicycle. Alaseta gazes at the bicycles. She spots a green bike with knobby tires and wide upright handlebars. It looks too big. Her eyes flit from bicycle to bicycle until she sees a bright red frame. Perfect, she can see herself breezing to market on the red bicycle. One by one, the new owners claim their bicycles. Alicetta locks her eyes on Big Red, hoping no one else will wheel it away. Finally, her grandmother's name is called. Only a few bicycles remain. Big Red leans against the container. Alicetta rushes over to it. This one, she says. In the bush taxi on the way back to their village, Alicetta worries. She has never ridden a bicycle before. Her grandmother pats her hand. It will be no problem for you, Alicetta. Alicetta leans Big Red against a boabob tree in the center of her village. A few kids gather and then more until it seems as if the whole village is watching. She grips the handlebars tightly. The hand grips feel nice. They're smooth and new. She hitches up her pang, that's that out, um, skirt that she wears, and climbs onto the bicycle. She keeps one hand on the tree. Big Red wobbles. Alicetta hops off the seat and plants her flip-flops firmly on the ground. Still straddling the bicycle, she begins to walk. Her friends clap and call out her name. Her friend, Samira, offers to push her. Alicetta climbs up onto the seat and they are off. Samara jogs alongside Big Red, holding onto its seat. Then she takes her hand away. The bicycle slows down, wobbles, and Alicetta tumbles off. You need to go faster, Samara says. This time, when Samara lets go, Alicetta pedals hard. The bike is better behaved now. Alicetta leaves Samira behind and pedals so fast, she is soon past the last house in the village. She has done it. She stops and turns, sailing back into the village and riding circles around the cheering kids. Awa comes to watch. She cheers along with the kids and claps to Alicetta as she sweeps by on her new bicycle. Over the next few weeks, Awa and Alicetta put Big Red to work. They have a plot of land where they grow sorghum. It is ready to harvest, but there is one big problem. The birds often get to the sorghum before them. With Big Red, Alicetta can ride to the field early every morning to scare off the birds. Thanks to Big Red, they have more sorghum than usual to harvest. With more sorghum, the family eats better. Awa can also make a popular drink from sorghum called dulu. Making dulu produces extra yeast and draft, which is good animal feed. Awa trades the draft with her neighbors who have livestock in exchange for more sorghum. Alicetta begins to ride Big Red to the village markets. She now has a basket to carry items for sale. She sells the extra yeast, bags, bags she made out of plastic, and she butter that she and Awa make. With the extra money, Awa sends Alicetta's younger brother and sister to school. Over time, Big Red becomes an important part of the family. Alicetta rides to the sorghum field and the market and sometimes even gives her siblings a lift to school. Big Red is well used and well worn. One day, Awa takes a folded paper from her pang and hands it to her granddaughter. Inside the paper is some money. Awa explains that she has been saving for another bicycle. With two bicycles, we could earn even more, she explains. The next day, Alicetta takes a bush taxi to Kudugu. 
She walks through the streets looking at bikes for sale. She stops at a shop where a mechanic is fitting pedals onto a bright green bicycle. It has a wire basket attached to the front. It looks just the right size. She clears her throat. <clears throat> the mechanic looks up and smiles. Looking for a bicycle? Alicetta nods and points to the bike. Yes, this one. When Alicetta arrives back in her village with a new bicycle, she is in for a surprise. A pig has gotten away from its owner and plowed through her family's courtyard, knocking into Big Red and trampling the spokes. Alicetta knows what will happen now. There is no money to fix the bicycle, so she will have to sell its parts one by one. The new green bike will take its place, but Alicetta will miss Big Red. It was her first bicycle. Alicetta is at the market arranging her goods when a little pickup truck parks nearby. A man gets out. He chats with people, eventually stopping in front of Alicetta. His name is Borkery, he says, and he is looking for bicycles. He works at a medical clinic that sends health workers on bicycles to visit sick people in villages without doctors or nurses, and he needs more bikes. Alicetta thinks about Big Red and its broken spine. She tells Borkery she has a bicycle, but it needs repairs. She agrees to meet him at her house later. When Borkery arrives, he sees a faded red bicycle propped against a shed. He examines every bit of it, the tires, the wheel, and its broken spokes, the frame, the chain, the gears, the seat, even the hand grips. He nods, we can fix it. It is a strong bicycle. We will make it into an ambulance for the clinic. Alla and Alicetta tell him the story of how they got Big Red and how important it has been for the family. Alicetta wheels Big Red to the pickup truck, pats the seat, and whispers, Thank you. Bukhari takes Big Red and the other bicycles to a workshop on the outskirts of Kudugu. He sorts the bikes into two groups. Some are strong, but need repairs. The others are at the end of their working lives. Bukhari will use parts from them to fix the good bicycles. Bukhari's eyes fall on the faded red bicycle. Big Red looks pretty good compared to the other bikes. It has been well taken care of, but it needs stronger wheels, a new seat, brakes, hand grips, and a paint job. He picks up a wrench and gets to work. After a few hours, he is done. Big Red looks almost new. Now, Bukhari thinks, let's turn you into an ambulance. With a metal hoop and nail, Bukhari attaches a trailer to the bicycle. The trailer has the same tough wheels as the bicycle. On the trailer is a stretcher, popped, propped up so a person can see out. A safety belt keeps the patient safe during the ride. There is also a canopy to keep off the rain and the sun. Big Red is ready for work. The sun is coming up and her Herodotta winds a colorful scarf around her head, slips on her flip-flops and walks across the courtyard. Her mother is already pounding grain. Herodotta smiles, waves, and calls, see you later. The young woman is off to the health clinic where she volunteers. Herodotta strides down the road. She wants to be on time. Today will be her first visit to a village on the new bicycle ambulance. A fine red dust coats everything. When she arrives at the clinic, she pauses to brush off the dust from the red bicycle ambulance parked out front. Inside the clinic, an older man is loading bandages and medicines into a medical bag. He shakes Herodotta's hand. How are you? How is your family? What's new? Herodotta loads the medical bag onto the back of the bicycle. She adds some bottled water and a blanket. As she pedals to the village, she sees other bicycles pass by. One is carrying a load of something so big, she can't even tell what it is. Another rider has three children clinging to it. And another has a little goat tucked into a basket on the back. After riding for half an hour, Herodotta arrives at the village. She hears the chatter of voices before she sees a crowd of people. She jumps off the bicycle, leans it against a tree, and wiggles her way through the crowd. A young boy lies on the ground, his head on a woman's lap. His eyes are scrunched shut and he is very quiet. The woman speaks softly to the boy, patting his head. No one wants to move him. He's in pain and his leg lies at an awkward angle. It is broken. Herodotus speaks up. 
She explains who she is and points to the bicycle ambulance. Two men help her remove the portable stretcher. Herodotta grabs a water bottle and some pills for pain. The men ease the boy onto the stretcher. He cries out as they lift him. She explains that she will take him to the clinic where a doctor can fix his leg. He must be brave, she tells him. Off they go on Big Red. At the clinic, a doctor sets the boy's leg. Herodotta pats Big Red's seat as she leaves. Good work, she says quietly. Herodotta's first day with the bicycle ambulance becomes a legend in the villages around the clinic. Everyone knows who she is when she rolls into town. The kids call the bike La Grande Rouge, which means Big Red. Bukhari visits regularly to check on the bicycle. He brings parts and keeps La Grande Rouge working well. He's pleased the bike has a name and has done so much good. Over the next few years, Herodotta visits many villages, sometimes as long as three hours away. The bicycle allows her to deliver medications and bring sick people to the hospital. One day, it's time for Herodotta to move on. She has gained valuable experience with the medical clinic and Le Grand Rouge. She finds a job in town with a bigger clinic. At the end of her last ride, she pats, puts the bicycle away, pats the seat, and whispers, thank you. She stares at the red bicycle for a moment, wondering where its journey began. Far away, for sure, she thinks. But there is no hint that a girl pedaled along dirt roads carrying goods to market or that a boy once whipped around a small American town on the red bicycle. But they remember Big Red and Herodotta will too. Thank you, La Grand Rouge. The end. And here is some pictures of some real life um, adventures of bicycles that um, the same organization that sponsored this book talks about. This one, he's carrying um, bread. Look at all that bread on that bicycle. Uh, this one is a towering load of wood. And here is a banana delivery in Uganda. So those are some of the ways that these uh, donated bikes are being used in other countries. I think it's a wonderful story. It's a great way to see how a small act really, like donating your bicycle, can make such a difference. Think of all the people that this bicycle helped. Not just the people that rode it, but the people that got medicine for it, that the people bought their food in the market, uh, that the bicycle brought. So it's pretty impressive what one bicycle can do, what one person donating one bicycle can do. So that's what I wanted to share with you today, the red bicycle, the extraordinary story of one ordinary bicycle. Thanks so much for listening. Um, I will see you again very soon. And I miss you guys so much. Bye.